Welcome back, everybody. Seattle has no shortage of breweries popping up. And on Friday, the largest Seattle breweries only tasting event takes place under one roof. Just go to one place and you get to taste them all. Seattle Magazine's fourth annual brew event showcases more than 80 beers from breweries all located within the Emerald City. Welcome the go-to guy for all things beer, Seattle Magazine contributor Kendall Jones. It's good to see you. Good to see you. We've got 80? We've got, we've got over 60 in the city of Seattle. Wow. Which is why we're able to do a beer fest and focus just on beers from Seattle. And we're one of the only places on earth that I can think of that has that many breweries. That is impressive. And they're probably not even very old, right? This is... Most of them are quite new, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. All right, you brought beer. That's the important I did bring thing. Beer. Um, and so we're going to talk about some of the different kinds. And I don't even think I know any of these. So shall we start on this end? Yes, this first one, this is from Ghostfish Brewing. In okay, let's look Seattle, at this baby. In Soto. And it's, this is an entirely gluten-free beer. Ghostfish is one of the only dedicated gluten-free breweries in the country. Interesting. And they're probably the most highly awarded. So not only do we have a great gluten-free brewery in Seattle, we have probably the best gluten-free brewery in the country is in Seattle. Now, is and that... that's my opinion, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but you're the go-to guy for this thing. So does this change the taste of the beer that it doesn't have gluten, or it's just for people who are not tolerant of I gluten? I guess what, what, you, what we would say is that they're, you're, they're not using barley, mm -hmm. so they're using uh, gluten-free grains. This is you know millet and rice, uh, malted millet and, mal and rice. And uh, they, they, what they're doing is they're trying to give it the same flavor as beer that is made with barley. And you so feel they've done point. it. I think they do as good a job as anybody, I'll say okay. that. Okay, I'm not a beer drinker, so I'm going to let you taste and, and describe. But Derek, who's on this camera over here, is a beer drinker. This, um, here you go, buddy. With their there beer, you go. I mean, I think with their beer, the thing that I like about it is that if you don't know that it's gluten-free beer, you're just going to think it's beer, which is, which is impressive. How's it going over there? It's pretty good? Okay. <laughs> Next one. Right, this next one that we have this here is super is, dark. Well, no, we're gonna go to this one. Oh, next. sorry, I skipped one. This is this is a Bodhisattva mm -hmm. IPA from Georgetown Brewing here in, in Seattle. Obviously, they're all from Seattle, so. Right. Um, this is an IPA. This is a very highly awarded. Last year, it was named the best IPA in America. Basically, it won the gold medal at the Great wow. American Beer Festival. Wow! So this is a big deal. Yeah, and it's very fruity. You notice the, the nose; it's very it, tropical. Yeah, it does. It smells yeah. a little almost like wine. And all that fruit flavor and all that fruit aroma comes from hops. People is, always think, you know, did they put did they put mangoes in this? No, it's just from the hops. It's, it's just all the from hops. the hops. Okay, don't worry, Derek. There's another one coming. <laughs> yeah, we got plenty. We got plenty okay. of beer for Derek today. He's eyeballing it. Now okay, this we're... next one. This is from Fremont Brewing. This is called okay. Bonfire, and it's it's basically it's a uh, a winter warmer, which is a uh, an English style of beer. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like a brown ale uh, that they they make for the winter. This is a very quaffable beer. A quaffable yeah, beer. Yeah, and it, they call it bonfire because I I assume they call it bonfire. It makes me think that I want to stand stand around a bonfire down at Alki Beach with a can of this beer and just carry yeah, on and stay warm. Smells really good. Do you like that one? Yeah, it's really good. Uh, I haven't had this one in a while. This one's really <laughs> good. Mm. You can have two. You are quaffing. Okay, what about this guy? This was this is Pike's entire or let me see Monk's uncle, excuse me. And Monk's this is a uncle. Belgian style triple. And uh, it's a big, big beer. It's a big, big, strong beer. And it's a triple because it's stronger than a double. The, the Belgians <laughs> name their beers that way. The Belgians have beer, and then yeah. they have double, which is stronger than right. beer. And then they have triple, which is stronger than double. So you just so, need to know that yeah, before you go. Yeah, just you this is, this is, I think this is 9% or 9.5%. Good Lord, alcohol. if they go to it's quadruple. As as a, yeah, they, and there is such a thing as quadruple. <laughs> is there really? Yes. Oh, my goodness. But this one has got a lot of uh, spicy uh, banana, clove kind of flavors. And once again, it all comes from the yeast. But it tastes like regular beer. Oh, uh, depends on what you mean by regular beer. Um, I mean, it tastes. It, it tastes. It tastes. It's, it's very good. It um. It does taste like. It does taste like regular beer. What I'm saying is that there are some some hints of banana right. and clove and things like that in it that come from the yeast, and it's supposed to be there, and that's that's what you're looking for in this. But kind you of don't beer. taste the extra alcohol. You just taste the beer. Um. Th in this one, you don't. Sometimes when you have those bigger, stronger beers. <laughs> He didn't have to Derek's be a happy asked man twice. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Salute. On these stronger beers, sometimes um, you can get it to where you have a lot of alcohol burn and it's not really what you're looking for. Right. But if you do it well, like like Pike Brewing does, um, you don't really have that much of an alcohol burn. So it's still smooth. Yes, it's still smooth. It's still smooth. And then this is just beautiful. What a beautiful now, before color. Before you drink that one, that's from uh, Bluebird Ice Cream Company. What? Yep, they have a brewery as well. 
their, their brewery and an ice creamery. Do I see a float in our future? You have a float in our future. We have okay. some vanilla bean ice cream. This is their, what wow. they call Boo Bird. Their, their uh, Boo Bird is a uh, pumpkin porter with ghost chili. Okay. So it's uh, probably going to be a little bit spicy. And How at, much ice cream brew, do you recommend? That's a lot, but that's add, a lot. But okay. I like ice cream. All right, well then. We'll I like ice cream as much as I like beer. Do you? So I think so. All right, that one can just, be yours. I just don't write about ice cream. Um, well. Yeah, so um, they're going to be making these floats for people at the event on Friday. Really? How about that? And if you don't like beer, you can have some ice cream. Oh, that's really good. Derek, that, it's got your name on it. The ice cream. The ice cream works really well with that beer. <laughs> it's Derek's birthday, by that's the a, way. That, Happy that, birthday. Hey, Derek. Cheers. There's your Derek. birthday float. So that worked yeah, out it, it, well. This works out really well because it's a it, the spicy beer. It's it's got ghost chili in it, so it's it's spicy, and, and the, the, the ice cream helps kind of smooth it out and mellow it out. But yeah, that's really good. I'm looking forward to having one of these on at the at the festival. Excellent. Well, I don't want to stop you. Go ahead. But I have a couple other questions. Okay. What um what made us such a craft beer capital? You know, it started back in the 80s. One of the very first craft beer breweries in the country, like when there was only five craft breweries in the country, one of them was in Seattle. Red Hook started here. Right. And it's just steamrolled since then. Mm -hmm. um, some of the oldest, best craft breweries in the country all started here in the Pacific Northwest, and Washington was the birthplace of a lot of those. And, you know, Pyramid, is yeah. right here, and uh, they they started here in Washington, and they're one of the oldest breweries in the in the country. And like I said, Red Hook and Hales Ale is you know has been around since 1983, and it's it's impressive that we we started the whole thing way back then, and we just kept steamrolling since then. And now, Washington, and the only state that has more breweries than Washington is California. So Which if you think about shouldn't that. count because they've got it's vast. Yeah, yeah. Huge amount of land. To their credit, people. they don't just have more breweries; they have a lot more breweries. <laughs> so they have like six hundred and something breweries. Wow. We have we have over three hundred and fifty in Washington now. But per capita, we're still winning. We right? are, and for so. and per capita for the uh, a metropolitan area, Seattle is number one. A they did a amazing. study a few months ago that showed that Seattle, the Seattle area was number one for major metropolitan areas in terms of the number of breweries. Well, this event is a wonderful thing for people who like beer because you can really get to taste some things outside your comfort zone and maybe discover something you didn't even know you loved. That's is that pretty right. good over there? That's working out for it's you. Working out for okay, you. the fourth <laughs> annual Brew Seattle tasting event is this Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. at Bell Harbor Conference Center. You can find a link to the tickets on our homepage. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. After the break, a canine superhero being honored in a very special way back in a moment. Thank you.